Soaring to great heights, the Ifugao rice terraces are touted to be a masterpiece of the ingenuity of the highland people in northern Philippines for generations. Its beauty, magnitude, people and history is truly breathtaking. These terraces built largely by hand are considered by the Philippines to be the eighth wonder of the world. Inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1995, the Ifugao rice terraces of the Philippines are undoubtedly a source of pride for the Ifugao and for Filipinos all over the world. Textbooks and national histories have long been carrying the findings of American anthropologists Roy F. Burton and Henry Otley Bayer putting the age of the rice terraces to be 2,000 or 3,000 years old. But they are not. According to the latest findings of the Ifugao archaeological project led by Filipino archaeologist Stephen Acabato, the Ifugao rice terraces were built around 1500 to 1600 AD, making it around 400 years old only. Thus, the way mainstream Filipino consciousness imagines the Ifugao in connection with the age of the terraces needs to change. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button below, and hit also the notification bell so that you won't miss any of my new videos. The Ifugao rice terraces of the Philippines were inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1995, the first ever property to be included in the cultural landscape category of the World Heritage List. The Ifugao rice terraces reach a higher altitude and were built on steeper slopes than many other terraces. The Ifugao rice terraces are complex of stone or mud walls and careful carving of the natural contours of hills and mountains to make terraced pond fields coupled with the development of intricate irrigation systems, harvesting water from the forests of the mountain tops, and an elaborate farming system. The Ifugao rice terraces illustrate the remarkable ability of human culture to adapt to new social and climate pressures as well as to implement and develop new ideas and technologies. It is simply fascinating that the locals still plant rice and vegetables on the terraces, That these rice terraces are ancient has always been accepted as gospel truth since this was declared by the late American anthropologists Barton and Bayer in the early 20th century. Bayer, credited as the father of Philippine archaeology, documented the history and culture of Ifugao, where he settled until his death in 1966. Bayer arrived at the conclusion that these rice terraces are 2,000 to 3,000 years old through how long it would have taken to construct the elaborate system which fill valley after valley of a Fugao country. Writing in 1919, Barton wrote, I come to the conclusion that the Ifugaos must have lived in their present habitat for at least 2,000 years, and I believe that these figures are too small. Bayer, writing in 1955, Without making clear all the considerations which went into his estimates, he concluded that it took two and three thousands years to cover northern Luzon with the great terraced areas that exists there now. However, many disagreed with Barton and Bayer. Keesing, writing in 1962, in his study of historical materials available in northern Luzon impressed particularly what was not written in these materials. The terraces are simply not mentioned in the early Spanish accounts. He wrote, military commanders, mission fathers, and other visitors fail to give them even passing mention. Similarly, writing in 1967, Conklin points out that despite the richness in reporting on many aspects of Ifugao culture, such fundamental activities as terrace construction have been given scant attention. Lambrecht, writing in 1967, testified that he himself observed that within two months several stone-walled terraces of moderate dimensions were built by a group of not more than five Ifugao men working on steep slopes. He also witnessed a 55-year-old man constructed five narrow stone-walled terraces within less than three months, working only four hours a day. Thus, Robert Mayer, writing in 1973, said, 
It is ironic that despite Bayer's reputation as the father of Philippine archaeology and the special place the Ifugao held in both his personal and research lives, the discussion of Ifugao antiquity has had to take place without the benefit of a single shovel full of archaeological evidence. Instead, it had been another of those cases, so familiar in pioneer anthropology, where positions concerning temporal questions are developed by inferences drawn from tangential evidence or the ringing of sparse historical accounts for information which is all too likely not to be in them. Despite the lack of scientific basis, the long history model, which says the terraces are 2,000 years old, has become a widely accepted truth. It entered the national consciousness when it began to be repeated in schools and then remained as an unchallenged fact in textbooks. Recent scientific research suggests the 2,000-year origin narrative is wrong. The Ifugao rice terraces may not be as ancient as our grade school history books would have us believe. The rice terraces may be just as old as some colonial period churches, a team of archaeologists find. The Ifugao Archaeological Project, IAP, composed of archaeologists from the University of the Philippines, National Museum, and University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, and backed by a civil society group called Save the Ifugao Terraces Movement, made a scientific investigation of the Ifugao rice terraces. This team of scientists presented new findings that pegged the age of the iconic rice terraces at 400 years instead of the long-assumed age of 2,000 years. The Caldeliera rice terraces are widely regarded as a relic of a time before European colonization. But IAP claims that, in fact, the rice terraces may have been a consequence of Spanish colonization in more low-lying communities. According to Professor Acabado, director of the Ifugao Archaeological Project and assistant professor of anthropology at UCLA, the current data set indicates that wet rice was cultivated later, after 1650 soon after the appearance of the Spanish in the Magot Valley in the late 1500s. Acabado said his group excavated on the site of the old Kiangan village in Ifugao using the bulk soil radiocarbon dates and the Bayesian approach or tools to determine the antiquity and age of events. He also said that by using digitized land use maps and ethnographic data on rice terracing practices in Ifugao, they identified the Bocos Terrace system in Banawi as the oldest terraces. Excavations were conducted there to obtain charcoal samples for radiocarbon determinations. Acabado also said the recent archaeological dig results and a comprehensive study of farming in the upland communities across centuries pointed to one inevitable conclusion, that the terraces were built close to 1565 or 1585 during the initial push of the Spaniards toward northern Luzon. He said this was based on carbon dating of the soil beneath the original stone wall foundations of a few riverside and inland terraces in Banawi Fugao. Data appear to validate theories set in the 1960s and 1970s that the people who built the terraces were Maggot River settlers who migrated to the mountains to avoid Spanish colonizers. These also suggest that the terrace people first cultivated taro before rice farming was introduced by lowlanders who followed them to the rain-rich mountains after a weather shift left Cagayan Valley with drought. In their study, Acabado said that the radiocarbon determinations and subsequent calibrations from the Bocos agricultural terraces suggests that the suite of agricultural strategies of ancient Filipinos include terracing. Indeed, terraces can be seen across the Philippine archipelago not as magnificent as what we see in the Cordilleras, but illustrates similar technology. He also said, if the initial terrace expansion coincides with the arrival of the Spanish in the northern Luzon lowlands in AD 1585, this correlation may suggest that indigenous population migration away from the Spanish invasion and into the highland was significant enough to expand terrace systems. Thus, based on their findings, the extent of the rice terraces that we see today could be a product of historical population movements in between 1500 to 1600 AD. Even though the long history model is problematic, 
but it continues to be reinforced within Philippine history curricula and larger society to advance a variety of agendas, ideologies, and beliefs. These were predicated on the widespread way of thinking in which heritage objects of greater age are automatically considered as having greater value continues to make the task of changing the minds of scholars, politicians, government agencies, and the general public, a challenge. Older or later dating does not diminish the heritage value of the Ifugao rice terraces. Acabado stressed, the rice terraces symbolizes the rich culture of Filipinos. Dr. Acabado also said that when he initially published his initial findings in 2009, it went largely unnoticed. Of course, the Ifugao were initially hostile to the idea that the rice terraces were much younger than 2,000 years old. However, with public communication and community engagement efforts, he mentioned that it took a few years, until 2014, before Ifugao historians began accepting the idea of the young rice terraces, and as recently as 2015 there were nationalistic historians who still dispute the dates of the rice terraces. The tourism industry in Ifugao is also reluctant to accept the new dates because of a perceived loss in grandeur to the rice terraces. For Marlon Martin, Chief Operating Officer of the Save the Ifugao Terraces Movement, the actual age of the rice terraces does not matter to the people of Ifugao. He said, We hope that this latest archaeological finding would boost our campaign to integrate cultural heritage and indigenous knowledge at the heart of formal education systems. The of 2000 year narrative of the rice terraces added nothing to the Ifugao contribution to the history of the Philippines. However, the later dating of the Ifugao rice terraces rise its heritage and historical value. They serve as a memorial of Ifugao's ingenuity and their struggle against imperialism. It serves as a reminder that the Ifugao themselves were not colonized, and successfully resisted the marauding Spanish forces. The Ifugao rice terraces qualify for the UNESCO World Heritage List because they commemorate the struggle against imperialism and the emergence of self-sufficient, sustainable communities surviving against the odds of a modernist onslaught. In fact, the rice grown in the terraces is from heritage seed stock and is used to strengthen cultural identity and are important for community rituals. The terraces are the products of a very rich and complex Ifugao culture that resisted the Spanish conquest for more than 200 years. Archaeological digs show they were converted to wet rice as a strategy to consolidate economic and political resources that allowed them to resist the marauding Spanish forces less than 400 years ago. It cemented the social order, unified the Ifugao against invasion, and sealed a social organization that maintained the terraces and preserved these mountain settlements. By insisting on the 2000-year narrative, this important era of colonial resistance and sustained war for independence in Ifugao and the Cordilleras is relegated as minor events in the history of the country. Thus, the narrative of the 400-year-old history of the rice terraces put the Ifugao in their rightful place in Philippine history, and it remain as a pride of the Filipinos and a national treasure of our country. The rice terraces symbolizes the rich culture of Filipinos. Rehabilitation and restoration efforts of the people in Ifugao and the Philippine government are much needed in order to preserve its integrity and survival. Do you agree? Please leave a comment below. If you find this video informative and helpful, please give it a like and share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you will not miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.